Welcome to the UCSF Pediatric Cardiac Catheterization and Electrophysiology Lab instructional video. My name is Bob and I am here to tell you everything that you need to know about your procedure and to introduce you to our Pediatric Heart Center team. You are watching this video because you or your child has been scheduled to come to UCSF for either a cardiac catheterization or electrophysiology procedure. I will take you through each step of the process from the first call until the procedure is complete and you're back home. This is Carolina Garcia. She has already contacted you to schedule the date of your procedure. You can call her prior to the procedure if you need to change the date or have any other questions to discuss with her. Her number is included on the scheduling letter as well as shown on the bottom of your screen. Your exact time of arrival is not yet confirmed. You will be called by one of our doctors three to five days before the procedure with the time and other important information that I will talk to you about shortly. The doctors will also be able to answer any questions that you might have at that time that haven't already been answered by this video or by Carolina. There are some important things to know about prior to coming to the hospital. First, you may be asked to stop taking some of your medications, such as aspirin or warfarin, in the days prior to your procedure. If you are taking any other medications, the doctor will let you know when to stop them, but usually you'll be taking your last dose the previous day. Second, and most important, you should not eat or drink anything after midnight the night before, unless otherwise told by the doctor. Infants and young children may be able to eat or drink at a later time, but be sure to follow the guidelines given to you when you receive your preparation phone call from your doctor three to five days before the procedure. Failing to do so may lead to either delaying or canceling the procedure. The night before the procedure is a good time to take a bath or shower to get rid of any extra germs. If you or your child has a cough, cold, fever, or rash, please let us know before the procedure in case we have to reschedule it. It is particularly important when an infant has a rash in the groin area. We would hate for you to come all the way here and find out that the procedure needs to be rescheduled. Lastly, do pack a bag. Although many of our patients go home the same day, some have to stay in the night. The rooms that the patients stay in may be tight with equipment, so you also may want to have a backup plan for a hotel, particularly if more than one person is staying the night. UCSF policy does limit only one sleeping family member at night. The morning of the procedure will be very busy. You may be asked to arrive early, and often traffic can be a major issue. If you live more than two hours away, you should consider arriving the night before. If you do drive in on the morning of, you ought to leave yourself plenty of time to beat the morning traffic, particularly if crossing the Bay Bridge. Once you arrive at UCSF, you should utilize the parking garage. Street parking can be challenging because the meters only last two hours, and the unpredictable street cleaning tickets can be very expensive. You can check out the map to familiarize yourself with the campus beforehand. Unfortunately, there is no free parking here for anyone, including me. Once you arrive, you should head to the admissions department on the first floor of the hospital, and don't forget your insurance card and ID. If your child is the patient, you will go to a pediatric unit. If you are an adult and are the patient, you may go to an adult unit or to a pediatric unit, depending on bed space availability. Don't worry adults, our pediatric nurses are used to caring for you too. While waiting for the cath procedure to begin, some important tests will be done before we start. You will have your vital signs taken first. Then, you may have an electrocardiogram or echocardiogram done, just as in the clinic. Usually that's not necessary though. Some numbing cream will be placed on the sites where we expect the catheterization to be performed and where an IV will be placed. Usually, the IV is placed on the ward before going up to the lab. This allows us to take the blood samples necessary before the procedure, give fluids, and give intravenous relaxation medication in the lab before the start of the procedure. The consent for the procedure is usually done at this time, and all of your final questions can be asked and answered. Child Life Services will also be available, if requested, to help educate your child to the hospital as well as to provide some fun, interactive comfort measures. Don't forget to bring you or your child's favorite toy or comfort item to help pass the time. Sometimes there is even a little time to play in the playroom while you are waiting. Ladies and young women, we will ask you to pee in a cup to confirm that you are not pregnant before we use the x-ray equipment. This is a legal requirement before any type of procedure using x-ray. The results are confidential. The best part of coming up to the lab is that everyone in the family can come and see the cool room where the procedure is done. Here you will meet the whole team. This will include the nurses, cardiologists, and anesthesiologists. Once the introductions are made, 
the patient hops up on the table and the timeout is done. This is a necessary verification that we have the right patient doing the right procedure and that there are no outstanding issues or questions. At this point, the family is given a pager with instructions, sedation medication is given, and the procedure begins. When the procedure is completed, the family is paged and the patient is brought down to the recovery area. There, your doctor will go over the procedure with you, often showing you pictures taken during the procedure. Once awake enough, the patient can start to drink and then to eat. If there is pain beyond mild discomfort, your nurse can also administer additional medications. There also may be a couple of final tests, like an ECG or echocardiogram. The patient will need to lie flat in bed at least four to six hours. Depending on the exact circumstances, you may be able to go home the same day or you'll be asked to stay overnight for further recovery. A couple of days after the procedure, you will get another phone call, this time from one of the cath lab nurses. They will check in to be sure that there are no problems and that you've had all of your questions answered. The nurse will also check to see if we could have done something better for you, as well as ask for feedback for improving future patient experiences. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation on the cath or EP procedure that you or your child will soon be having. We are honored to be able to care for you and look forward to meeting you soon. If you have any questions about anything that you have seen on this video or haven't and can't wait until the phone call from the physician, please call Carolina at the contact number on your letter. She will do her best to answer your questions or get someone else to do so. Goodbye and see you soon.